Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at square roots today. We're going to um, look at square roots separately and then also in equations and solve square roots. So before we get started, let's talk about the basics of what square roots are. Um, first of all, they are not plants that are put into a cinder block and get it, square roots. Or half of a number is not a square root. Imaginal thing that cannot be explained is also not a square root. It is a factor of a number. When multiplied by itself, it gives you that number. I'll show you some examples of that. Um, if number one is the number we're looking for, the square root is one, because one times itself, the factor times itself gives you that number. So the square root of four is two, because two is a factor of four multiplied by itself gives you four. Here's a really helpful list of numbers to memorize. Um, these numbers in green are what we call perfect squares. They are numbers that have a, a nice integer value for the square root. They work out nicely. They're called perfect squares, and they're, they're not very common. Um, there's not a lot of them, so it's a good opportunity to, to have those ones memorized. So we, when we're looking for those, you'll find that we use these numbers quite a bit um, in questions with square roots. Also, another list to memorize, and that is that negative 1 times negative 1 gives you positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives you positive 4. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives you positive 9. So these negative numbers multiplied together also give you positive, perfect square answers. All right, let's look backwards from that. If we are trying to find the square roots of 25, what we're looking for is two numbers that are factors of 25 or one factor of 25 multiplied by itself will give you 25. In math terms, we write it like this. It's um, this square root symbol. That means the square root of 25. All right, on a calculator, it looks like this. You can just plug it into your calculator and solve it. 25, hit the square root button, or maybe hit the square root button and then hit 25, depending on the calculator you have. All right, calculators are going to be a helpful tool throughout here. Um, to finding the square roots. Well, let's go ahead and actually find the square root of 25. So let's solve the square root of 25. Two numbers that multiply together to give you, or by itself, to give you 25 is 5 times 5. All right, 5 times 5 is 25. So therefore, the square root of 25 is 5. Or we can also say negative 5 because negative 5 times negative 5 gives us 25 as well. All right. So because positive 5 times positive 5 can give you 25, or negative times negative gives you 25, this is how we write our answer. The square root of 25 is negative 5 or positive 5, plus or minus 5. All right, let's go ahead and solve another one. Hopefully this will help to show, again, we have 4 and 36. If you have the list from the beginning memorized, you know that both of these are perfect squares. 4 is 2 times 2, and 36 is 6 times 6. We can again say this is also negative 2 over 6 times negative 2 over 6. I'll give you a positive 4 over 36. So the square root of 4 over 36 is positive plus or minus 2 over 6, or in other words, plus or minus 1 third. All right, it works the same way with fractions. You'll take the square root of the top, square root of the bottom. Square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. Square root of 36 is plus or minus 6, and then we simplify. All right, okay. One more thing about square roots is this. The square root of x squared is equal to x. And we'll show, show that in just a second. Those are opposite operations. You know how we had um, like addition is opposite of subtraction? Multiplication is the opposite of the addition? Well, squaring a number like x squared is the opposite of taking the square root of a number. And you'll use that when you solve a question like this. This says x squared is equal to 100. We're, when we're asked to solve, what we want to do is get the variable by itself, x by itself. 
So how do we get rid of that x squared? We'll take the square root of x squared. On the left side, that will leave us with x. Okay? So the inverse operation, or the opposite operation of squared, is the square root. So we take the square root of both sides. That leaves us with x on the left. And on the right, the square root of 100 will be plus or minus 10. In other words, 10 times 10 is 100, and negative 10 times negative 10 gives you also 100. All right? And we can check our work here by plugging that information into the original equation. Is 10 squared equal to 100? Yes. Is negative 10 squared equal to 100? Yes, it is. All right. Let's look at uh, one more question like this. Again, x squared plus 1. What we're going to do is take the square root of both sides, which leaves us with x by itself and over on our right side, plus or minus 1. 1 is kind of an interesting number because the square root of 1 is 1, or plus or minus 1. So it's kind of a funky one, but we want to be familiar that 1 is definitely a perfect square. And the importance here, again, x squared, to get x by itself, you have to take the square root of both sides of the equation. That leaves you with x by itself and the solution over on the right. All right. Now, we move into questions that are a little bit more complicated. We're going to follow the same exact patterns that we had in the past, but we're going to add one more step to this. So if we get a question, x squared plus 6 is equal to 70, how do we solve that? What number would we plug into that equation to make it true? Well, we're going to try and get x completely by itself, and to do that, we need to first get rid of this plus 1 over on the left side. That will help us get x closer to being by itself. So we subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. 6 minus 6 is 0, leaving us with x squared by itself on the left. Now we have a situation that's very similar to what we just did. x squared equals 64. We'll take the square root of both sides and get our final answer. We can check our work by plugging the values of plus and minus 8 back into the original equation and solve and see if that gives us the answer. 8 squared is 64 plus 6 equals or is equal to 70. All right, negative 8 squared gives you positive 64 plus 6 is equal to 70. So that works. All right. Here's um, the, the toughest type question. This one here is actually a little bit advanced. Um, I was wondering whether I should put it on here, but this is a good question. So it will show us again how we basically haven't really added all that much except for getting the square root. We want to get x squared by itself on the left side of the equation. So first we're going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. That leaves us. We get rid of the 3 from the left. 21 minus 3 is 18. We're left with 2x squared. Again, we're looking at x. We want to get that x by itself. So we'll divide both sides by 2. And when we divide both sides of this equation by 2, we're left with x squared on the left and 9 on the right. Now we're in the exactly the same situation as before. Take the square root of both sides, and we're left with plus or minus 3. We can check our work by plugging that back into the original equation right here. We can check and make sure that that works. Okay. But basically, this is what we're doing. When you are trying to isolate a variable, like this, we're trying to get x completely by itself. You'll notice that we did the subtraction first, then the division, then took the, got rid of the exponent. This is a pattern that you'll see. You're basically following the opposite of the order of operations. With order of operations, you would have done exponents first, then multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction. Right? So we're, when you're getting the variable by itself, you're using what we call inverse operations, or the opposite operations, and we're doing it in the reverse order of regular order of operations. So hopefully that is also helpful as we are solving our square root problems.